Now, while Steinhoff execs involved in one of the biggest corporate fraud scandals in South Africa are still living free, uh, there has been a media victory in the fight for information. Tiso Blackstar, now known as Arena Holdings, as well as investigative journalism unit Amabungane, have won a court challenge to access the Steinhoff audit report. Steinhoff engaged PwC to produce this report. Shortly after accounting irregularities emerged, the CEO Marcus Eusta resigned and the share price crashed. That was in December 2017. It released only a summary in 2019 that blamed a few executives for inflating profits by more than 100 billion rand. To discuss, we're now joined by Sharice Takur, who is Advocacy Coordinator at the Amabungane Centre for Investigative Journalism. Thank you for being with us, uh, Mr. Takur. Uh, congratulations, although I see your co-managing partner at Amabungane, Sam Sol, says they'll appeal, definitely. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, our experience is in litigation like this, it's often subject to appeal, but really it, it has to be emphasized that this first victory is really important. It sets the tone for any potential further litigation. And uh, when we look at the actual content of the judgment, it's very strong uh, in favor of access to information in this case. So we are very pleased with this victory. Um, it's an important step along the road. Since the whole debacle, um, Steinhoff has new leaders. It's claimed to be fixing things, to be caring about governance. So why are they withholding the report in the first place? Why not just tell the world what happened? Well, I think that's something you definitely have to ask them. But uh, from our perspective, um, this is an important piece of the puzzle. Um, if you recall the, the um, allegations when they came out in 2017, um, how devastating they were to, to so many people, including people who had um, pension funds invested in Steinhoff. It was a very scary time. And the media has followed uh, this, this um, issue very closely. But there's always been that, that missing aspect. Uh, the, the summary that they had published was very scant on detail. And really, in order to get the full picture as to what um, transpired um, in, in 2017 and, and the aftermath, this PwC report is, is really a, an important piece of the puzzle. So um, perhaps there's something um, incriminating, perhaps there's something that they don't want the world to know. Uh, they claimed it was legally privileged, but the court dismissed that argument uh, for several reasons, in examining all the evidence uh, in play. So um, the ultimate uh, outcome of this is that Really, this is something that the people have an interest in knowing. And yeah. um, as Abu Bunkani and Financial Mail were very pleased about this victory because it, it takes us a step forward to actually um, finding out what actually happened. I understand that Steinhoff argued that releasing uh, the, the report could actually jeopardize legal action against the likes of Marcus Yester, the, the former CEO. Uh, but it sounds like they, they couldn't prove anything like that. Indeed. Um, so the, the question was whether the report was legally privileged. And that question rested on whether litigation was contemplated at the time that they commissioned the report um, from P to PwC. So they engaged a law firm, Worksman's, to actually issue those instructions to PwC. And it seems that by kind of invoking um, a, a law firm's uh, services and at the same time having documentation uh, marked, you know, legally privileged and confidential, Steinhoff tried to establish that they, were, they, that they did actually contemplate uh, litigation at the time that they commissioned this report. But uh, this did not fly with the judge. Uh, the judge looked at the, at the evidence um, uh, that was present the, and looked and had to determine whether that evidence actually did um, establish that intention. And based on the uh, the evidence, it was not able to show that, or the court was unable to find that Steinhoff actually did have that intention at the time that it commissioned the report. So really, this is a, a legal question. It was a legal test that was applied, and um, the test did not go in Steinhoff's favor. And that's how we get uh, this outcome, that it was not legally privileged. And therefore, our country's access to information law, uh, PIA, applies. And we were able to gain access to the uh, report. On the plus side, there will be transparency or we'll find out what's in that report. 
Is there any negatives here? Could this perhaps deter corporates from even commissioning forensic audits? Uh, maybe they want to find out what's going on in their companies, uh, but don't want their dirty laundry to be aired. Is, is that fair enough? That's something that, you know, would have to be considered on, uh, you know, a case by case basis. Really what the, the job of journalists is to really look at information and, and um, you know, uh, get stories that the people need to know, uh, get them out in the public interest. So um, our access to information laws uh, do affirm the rights of journalists to do, to do that digging and to um, get that information that they need in order to report. So... Um, it's it's you know it's part of the the legislative uh, framework. It's part of the constitutional framework. So whether there's um, any kind of, of detriment, that will remain to be seen. Cherise, can you confirm there still hasn't been one arrest all these years uh, after December 2017? To my knowledge, no. And, and the claim has always been that the authorities uh, don't have the resources to investigate uh, sophisticated accounting fraud like this. But apparently this full report has been handed over to the legal authorities. So will this help us? Because we'll see exactly what they have. And therefore, um, it helps also question why a prosecution hasn't uh, taken place. I think uh, you've just hit the nail on the head. What this all boils down to is accountability. And um, it seems that in these circumstances that there cannot be accountability without information. And uh, that's why Amo Bungane and the Financial Mail, we've sought the access to this report because it will really kind of um, draw the link between what we have seen transpired between Steinhoff, between the authorities, um, it will shed light on, you know, some of the, the public statements that have been made. But um, it seems that to date there has not been accountability and this report will, will really help to, to fill in that puzzle. So, um, you know, uh, I think as, as people are interested in this, not for the sake of, you know, it, it being a, a scandal, but really because this is an instance of, uh, it appears to be, um, you know, corporate malfeasance. And this is very important uh, for people to, to know about and understand. Just as much as we focus on uh, public sector malfeasance, uh, we know that the private sector is also uh, capable of this. And it's really important that the public is able to know. Yeah. Are, are you also going to report on what the report says about Deloitte, another auditing firm? Uh, so we'll see what PwC has to say about Deloitte, because I, I think uh, Deloitte missed that Steinhoff was, was cooking the books massively. That is something that would be very eliminated from the report. We can't uh, speculate as to exactly what is in it, but this is precisely why we, we required access to it. So uh, we believe that there'll be a lot that's going to come out of it. It's um, The report itself is many thousands of pages long with um, thousands of pages of annexures. So it really seems to be quite extensive and we're sure that there will be some uh, very interesting potential bombshells uh, in it. So um, you know, we're very pleased that, you know, potential will be able to access that soon. All right. Congratulations again. That was Amabungani Center for Investigative Journalism Advocacy Coordinator, Sharice Takur.